are people in New Mexico who don't share your position on using military force in Syria? What do you say to these people? Well, I think we're all incredibly wary of military action after the last 10 years. But I think we wouldn't be seeing the progress that we've seen in the last few days if it hadn't been for the credible threat of military force. Uh, we have seen the Assad regime admit for the first time in decades that they have these chemical weapons. We finally have re-engaged the Russians. We have them back at the table for the first time in months. And so I think it's been very important for that to be out there in order to make progress on a diplomatic front that has been stalled for months and even years. And what are your thoughts on Russia seeking an alternative to military action? I think we have to be open to their plan, but we have to make sure that whatever moves forward is verifiable, is transparent. Uh, I would love to see inspectors go in, but I want to make sure that those inspectors are not Syrians, they're not Russians, they're a UN force that we could all agree on or an international force to make sure that those weapons find themselves in international hands and are destroyed. Uh, our goals here should be pretty simple. Make sure that Assad never commits this war crime against his own people again, never uses chemical weapons again. And in the long term, taking those chemical weapons, uh, getting them in internationally recognized hands and seeing them destroyed. Um, the alternative, if we do nothing, uh, one of the, the messages that sends to every dictator in the world is that this is okay. And if we do that, someday our forces, our men and women, women in uniform, could easily find themselves um, impacted by these chemical weapons. And I think that's an unacceptable, unacceptable outcome. And you're a member of the Intelligence Committee. How, was this a difficult decision for you to arrive at? How, how, what has yeah. the process been for you? It's been very difficult, uh, largely because, you know, I have some of the same concerns that my constituents have. But I, I do believe um, that if we didn't have uh, a real credible threat hanging out there, we wouldn't be seeing this progress. And it's very clear that the facts on the ground become more and more certain every day, that on August 21st, an enormous chemical weapons attack occurred, that over 1,400 people were killed, uh, mostly civilians, hundreds of children, um, and, and that the Assad regime was responsible for that. And I, I never want to see uh, this become this generation's Rwanda and have the international community sit back and watch as a genocide plays out. Uh, I think that there's room for diplomacy to move forward here, but only because the administration has taken a strong line with the Syrian regime. And what would you say to New Mexicans who are concerned that we are going to be engaged in another war, um, that have concerns about humanitarian relief and refugees? What would you say to those folks? Well, I think we need to do more to address humanitarian relief, uh, to make sure that the refugees uh, not only have the resources in the region, but that they don't destabilize uh, the region. And we need to, to make sure that we don't get involved in the Syrian civil war. Uh, I'm not suggesting that we should be uh, putting American troops on the ground there. I think that would be a terrible idea. But having the credible th threat of military action hanging out there over the Assad regime has been the only thing to date that has produced results, brought the, uh, the Russians back to the table, and, and made the, the Syrians sit up and take notice and, and realize that um, they need to begin to respond to the international community and the international norm of not using these terrible, terrible weapons.